Howdy everybody and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt and I'm Tim and today we're bringing you an amazing video on Japanese maples that are commonly used for bonsai. We know that we've got so many people out there who are very interested in bonsai and these are going to be some great ones that are commonly used for bonsai that you should check out. So this is a great video for beginners who like Japanese maples who are interested in selecting some cultivars that lend themselves very well to bonsai. Now, oftentimes people will say, hey, do you sell bonsai trees? And the answer is we sell a ton of trees that can be used for bonsai. And that, that some people that confuses them really quickly because they want to buy a $10,000 bonsai <laughs> that sat in a tray for 70 years and they want this tree to look like that right away. Now these are some trees you can start out with and create your own bonsai art. It's gonna be up to you to kind of curate that yourself. I'm no expert in bonsai, but I do have some favorite trees to be used for bonsai. That's what we're gonna be discussing today. And these are just the Japanese maples we do. We do also some Satsuki azaleas and other cool plants that are commonly used for bonsai. We're focusing on the Japanese maples. And uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our weekly emails on mrmaple.com. We had 10 new trees every Tuesday at 10 a.m. You'll want to check that out. Makawi Atsubusa is probably our, one of our favorite Japanese maples overall, and that's the one we'll probably start out with today. It's a really cool plant that sort of makes that tightly layering habit naturally all by itself. Yeah, Makawa often is described as a bonsai-like look even in the landscape. So you can get this tree out in the landscape, let it grow. It's going to develop very tight shingled layering foliage. Uh, one of our most popular trees we do here at Mr. Maple Tough as nails, very tight foliage, durable green tree that's going to go to a very bright orangey red in the fall. So it's, it's already a very showy plant and it already has a shape that lends itself very well for container gardening or bonsai. So it's a great starting point. Now I would like to say that any of the trees we have here on the table coming from Mr. Maple are grafted. We graft our Japanese maples here. It's the best way to get a landscape style plant. You can check out why we graft. We have a whole video on that. But several of these can be used for bonsai. They can be air layered from, or you can go with uh, you know, the original tree. And some of those make amazing bonsais themselves. I see people grafting plants onto bonsai to create new shapes. So certainly a graft can't ruin your bonsai if you graft into it to create new branches. The bonsai collection at the North Carolina Arboretum had two different Japanese maples yeah. that were grafted in their collection, looking amazing. Definitely can be done. Makawi Atsubusa is one that's easy to do that with because of that tight inner noting. And that tight internoting also makes it very difficult for us to graft and produce, Right. but it also makes it a, a very tight, dense dwarf that really puts up some unique arms that are very fun and interesting to train and shape and mm -hmm. wire when you're actually doing bonsai. For sure. An amazing plant. Definitely has already a bonsai-like shape. And uh, actually true of all of these, these are great plants to get out in your landscape and then grow seedlings from. You know, we're going to talk about several different plants here, but you can select seedlings from Makawa that have a Makawa Yetsubusa like shape, and those work awesome for bonsai too. So if you're getting into bonsai, it may be a great starting point for you to start out with a Makawa Yetsubusa. You can air layer from it, you can collect seeds from it, or you can bonsai the original plant. But either way, that shape is gonna be a perfect cultivar for a starting point. Now, next up on the table, we have Acer Palmatum Shishi Gashira. Now, this one's been used in bonsai for hundreds of years. It's an original 1700s Japanese maple list. Um, I have a friend who was growing these as bonsai for over 50 years, and his collection was amazing. He had about 50 different trees and bonsai containers, and they were all shishigashira. Some were seedlings, some were grafts, some were air layers off of his original shishigashira, but all of them were just out of this world for color. Shishigashira is one that's going to have a very small leaf to it, and so it lends itself very well to that shaping. The craziest thing was when we were asking him, and we were discussing what variants he had found in Shishigashira. And he said, well, I found some variegated ones, but the darn things grew too fast. And so I threw them out. Right, I about was, fell over. <laughs> it was like, you found a variegated lion's head Japanese maple. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but it, it's crazy and awesome and unique because it has that tuft kind of appearance to the leaf. And that's where it gets the name of lion's head or lion's mane, which Shishigashira kind of represents. And uh, makes a great tree out there in the landscape and garden because it's so unique and so different. But it also makes a great bonsai because of that smaller leaf that has that curled, twisted leaf to it. It really gives something very unique and special with a very unique texture. For sure. I love Shishigashira. You've heard me talk about it a lot if you watched our videos. I put too many of them in the garden. 
Uh, I have three or four of these in every garden I do, so it's a personal favorite. That fall color is insane. It's oranges with hints of reds and yellows within the orange. It is one of my favorite fall color Japanese maples. It's one that people may walk into your garden or bonsai collection and say, I didn't know that was a Japanese maple, but it's definitely one of our top candidates for growing for bonsai. You may have heard said before, uh, heard us say this before, but shishi is a mythological lion in Japanese literature. And shishi gashira essentially means the lion's head or lion's mane, specifically to that specific mythological creature. And so that's where it sort of translates together. But shishi gashira is a super durable plant. I think all of these plants that we have up here today are extremely durable. And that's one of the reasons too, they're very popular for bonsai is they're very, very hardy and easy to grow. I remember we gave one of our cousins a lion's head shishi gashira and basically we gave it to her, planted out in the landscape in a very hot, very hot, hot climate. Mm -hmm. And it just took off and did well for her, even with very little additional care that was given after we planted it. So next up in our list of favorite common cultivars for bonsai would be Shinda Shoujo. I'll throw to Sojo in the same category because it's commonly sought after, but Shin simply means improved Sojo. And what this is, is this is a plant with a smaller leaf that in the springtime puts out some fire engine reds. I'm talking so vibrant and so pronounced. Most people, when you look at a photo of it, believe it's actually a fall color photo rather than a spring color photo. The color can be so unreal that it really just gives some amazing, amazing color into a spring garden. And DeSojo is that red kind of color. And Shin with that, like Matt talked about, is the improved version of DeSojo. It's almost a little more salmon pink over top of it. It gets an yeah. even brighter hue to it. Same really small foliage. Works extremely well with the pinchback method. I know both Shin DeSojo and DeSojo air layer very well. It's one of the reasons people often ask for those. Again, these are grafts, but you can either collect seed, air layer, or graft, you know, go with the original grafted clone here for the bonsai but an excellent small plant for bonsai. Sunda Sojo is easily trainable, has great fall color, and is just a very unique small plant. I think one of the main reasons the Sojo and Sunda Sojo are so heavily sought after though, is the leaf shape is small, and they also shrink with that pinchback method. So by reducing the leaves, you can actually get the secondary flushes to come back smaller, and that's one of the reasons it's so heavily sought after. Now, I know a lot of people see the Sojo in some of the common bonsai books and that's one of the reasons why it's so heavily asked for but shinda sojo just meaning improved to sojo equally as good of a plant for bonsai and shinda sojo as you can see here it does go more green during the summer but i actually think that's one of the reasons why it is so commonly used for bonsai because with bonsai you're often painting a picture of the natural landscape and with the natural landscape you have the changes throughout the seasons mm -hmm. and with Sinda Sojo you get that bright amazing spring color it lets you know spring is here mm -hmm. and then during the summer you get that summery feel with the green color yeah. and then during the fall you get a return of that bright fire engine red color and it just gives such a dynamic contrast throughout the season that a bonza will be so fun to go mm -hmm. out and photograph different times of the season because the same plant can look so different in different times of the season. That's a great point, Tim. We're actually shooting this video here in August. It's so it's a very different time frame than the peak color for this. But I, I read an article I loved in Sukiya Living about how green Japanese maples give you that summery feel. And it's certainly an aesthetic in Japan of that midsummer, that fresh green foliage, and it just has a summer aesthetic to it. Excellent plant for all seasons, but definitely check out Shinda Sojo for an easy to grow bonsai. And sometimes we offer the Sojo as well. Both are excellent, excellent bonsai candidates. Um, amazing plants that just give you some really nice changes throughout the season. So next up, we have Acer Pomatum Kiyohime. And this is a really short, dense, compact plant that puts on lots of branches that's easy to train and to shape. Yeah, Kiyohime is gonna have a bright purple border to it in early spring, very small foliage. It's easy to see why this one's on our list for common Japanese maples for bonsai because it's going to make a small kind of toadstool shape to it. Don't think of it as pendulous, but think of it as a small dome. And so it's going to lend itself very well to training. It's an easy tree to wire and get some different shapes going on with. And it's an easy tree to remove a lot from because it has a lot of density to it. So you can kind of play with that shape and manipulate it a good bit with this one. Um, an excellent tree to be growing though, because of that very, very small foliage. That's probably the number one overall reason. Very small habit to start out with, so you're not having to recreate the world here. It's already a dwarf, but then also very, very small foliage and an intense spring color. 
And when we're looking at this plant, it's got tons of branches on a one gallon plant. That means a lot of these branches can easily be trained into shape. And that gives you a lot more to work with and a lot more branches mm -hmm. to go ahead and say, I want to train it this way. I want to trim these out and gives you more of an ability to go in there, see the picture that you want to make with it and design this one exactly how you want it without having to force buds to regrow new branches. Really is an awesome plant for bonsai, like Matt said, because of that small, mm -hmm. small leaf. But that spring color on this with the purple border around the edges is something that really makes this plant something special for a good spring interest, good summer interest, and then the fall you can get some really nice reds out of this. Excellent container plant, extremely durable as well. And Kiyohime makes an excellent, excellent plant. Now Kiyohime will develop a lot of branches that sort of go upwards and kind of arch outward a little bit more with horizontal branching. If you want something that has a little more semi-upright pattern, something like a Mirasaki Kiyohime could be a better candidate for you if you're looking for something that has more of that upright, semi-upright shape with a very similar leaf uh, spring border and a very similar fall color and habit. Yeah, we do variations of each of these. These are just our top five candidates for bonsai. Kiyohime also has a excellent bold red fall color and it just gives you something for every season. But one thing I always like to reiterate, one of the main reasons we chose some of these are they're tough as nails. Kiyohime is one of the most durable maples for bonsai. I've seen it be you know, worked over, manipulated, and it's an easy one to do. There's always risk involved when you're doing a bonsai because you're doing something unnatural with a plant. It, it is easy to kill trees if you don't know what you're doing with bonsai, but these are some of the most tough and durable plants to get into bonsai with. Now, last but certainly not least here on the table, we have Nishikigawa. Now, this is a pine bark Japanese maple, and it's easy to understand why that's popular. That bark will get that fissured look and give you the appearance of an older tree, even in a young plant. This is one of those plants that can really add that old look, like Matt talked about, on a really, really small tree. As it ages, you start to get that pine bark, and that pine bark just continues to add up mm -hmm. onto itself. These one gallons are actually starting to even show some little spots coming on of that pine bark starting to form. And as that tree ages, say 10, 15 years, it may look like a two, 300 year old tree mm -hmm. because of the way that bark comes together just like a pine uh, pine tree, which is why it's called a pine bark Japanese maple. Now Nishikigawa was one that's specifically selected for developing pine bark early. Typically for seven gallons, we're already showing some pretty good. It might not be a complete tree barking, but in that six to seven year age range, they're already starting to show a good bit. Uh, this is gonna be a green Japanese maple that has some electric fall colors. I've had a lot of ranges from oranges and reds to almost metallic -y, orangey red before. I mean, some crazy colors. It, it's one of the most underrated fall color yeah. Japanese maples we do because everyone focuses on the fact that it's a pine bark, mm -hmm. that it has that unique characteristic, but it has some amazing fall colors like you're talking about. And uh, this is a great candidate. We do offer Arakawa, which mm -hmm. is the alligator bark maple, a little more rough bark maple sometimes referred to as. And those are both this pine bark-esque plant that give you some nice winter interest, mm -hmm. but also just make this plant appear so much older. And they've got much smaller foliage than some of the other Japanese maples as well. For sure. Now, these are our top five Japanese maples that are commonly used for bonsai and for good reasons. I'd like to reiterate that all these are grafted, but you can use the original graft as a bonsai, especially if you're new to bonsai. It's a great way to learn. You can put this in the ground and air layer from it for more bonsai material. But also these five we've picked are also great to get mature specimens and get seed from for bonsai as well. So there's a lot of different ways to do that, uh, all depending on your level of bonsai and how deep you want to get into it. I'm no expert at bonsai, but these are some of my favorite trees to see done in a bonsai style. Um, and, and probably the top five best starting points for you to get into Japanese maple bonsai. I, bonsai is such a fun way to create a piece of art, living artwork. They do take a lot of care. So keep in mind when you're building bonsai, it is something that you have to take care of. But when you do it, you're creating a living piece of art that just continually continues to get better and better with age. And these are five of the great points to start out with, like Matt was talking about. I don't know of five more that have been more commonly used mm -hmm. for bonsai ever. And a lot of these, they're classic cultivars that just have amazing traits to be shaped, to be trained. And you can th got to think about this too in the type of bonsai style that you're looking for. If you're looking for something with more lateral branches, something like a Mirasaki Kiyohime is fantastic. 
If you're looking for something a little more tall or narrow, Nishikigawa is a better starting point or something like Shinda Soja. But all these can be trained and shaped into unique styles. They're easily to be, uh, to be changed and they're very malleable. And I think there's something that you could really enjoy doing and turning one of these selections or all of these selections into bonsai. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this look at our top five candidates for getting into bonsai. There's some great Japanese maples here. If you don't see these currently available on Mr. Maple, you can sign up under any of these to be notified when they're back in stock. We add 10 new exciting plants every single Tuesday at 10. That's often 20 plants. So if you don't see the plant you're looking for right now, fret not, it's likely coming back. This year at Mr. Maple, we're always working to get things back in stock. We greatly appreciate you watching this video. Share this with your gardening friends. If you're in a bonsai club, share this with your bonsai club. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.